Hi, in this video I will introduce alternating current and a few basic concepts and calculations. In my previous video I explained how a generator works. A simple generator will output a voltage and current that change according to the position of the coil turning in the magnetic field. This is known as an alternating current and it's the kind of electricity that is distributed around the country to our power outlets. In contrast, batteries and USB sockets output direct current which does not change direction. In the late 19th century, the leading scientists working on this new technology of electricity, including Thomas Edison, George Westinghouse and Nikola Tesla, fought a bitter battle over whether AC or DC is better. Although DC is often simpler to work with, and it's now essential for our modern electronics, AC ultimately won because it can be efficiently transported over long distances using transformers. From our AC waveform we can determine a few values. Measuring from top to bottom gives us the peak to peak voltage. Half of this value, i.e. from the equilibrium position to the peak, is known as the peak voltage. Be careful not to get confused between these two. Most of the time it's going to be the peak voltage that we need. The frequency of alternating current is related to the speed at which the generators in the power stations turn. In the UK the AC frequency is 50 Hz. This means that a full cycle is completed 50 times each second, or every 0.020 seconds. Because alternating current is changing all the time, what value should we use in our calculations? Let's consider what happens when we connect an alternating current supply to a resistor. The power dissipated in the resistor is the product of the voltage across it and the current through it, P equals VI. If we multiply these two sine waves together for the voltage and the current, we get a waveform for the power like this. It has twice the frequency and is positive at all values. This makes sense because power can only be positive. There's no such thing as a negative power. We can draw a line through the middle of this graph to represent the average power dissipated by our resistor. It is at half the peak value of the power. So P mean, the average power, is equal to P0, the peak power, divided by 2. What if we replaced our AC power supply with a simple DC battery? What value of DC current would produce the same heating effect in our resistor as our AC supply? Let's take a look at the average of our AC current. Wait, that's a sine wave oscillating about an equilibrium position, so the average current is zero. But if you stuck your fingers in an AC socket, you'd learn pretty quickly that it does not feel like zero. Do not try this at home. So we need a concept called root mean square current, or RMS. Basically, every value of current in our sine wave is squared. That makes all the values positive. Then the mean is found, and then we square root that mean. The main thing you should know about an RMS current is that the RMS value of an alternating current is the value of a direct current that would produce the same heating effect in a resistor. It's effectively a way of allowing us to easily compare AC and DC supplies. So a one ampere RMS alternating current would produce the same amount of heat in a resistor as a 1 ampere direct current. Returning to our power equation, since the power dissipated in a resistor is I squared R, it follows that the average power dissipated by an AC supply in a resistor will be the RMS current squared multiplied by R. We can also say that the peak power P0 is going to be equal to peak current squared multiplied by R. And we've already established that the mean power is equal to half the peak power. So therefore we can say that peak power squared multiplied by R divided by 2, so half of the peak power, is going to be equal to our mean power, I RMS squared R. Cancelling R and square rooting both sides gives us an RMS current equal to the peak current divided by the square root of 2. So the RMS current can be calculated from the peak current simply by dividing by root 2. We can do a similar derivation using P equals V squared over R to demonstrate that the RMS voltage V RMS is equal to V0 divided by root 2. And to check this, since we know that P0 is equal to V0, I0, PRMS should be equal to VRMS multiplied by 
i rms gives us v0 over root 2 multiplied by i0 over root 2 which gives us a half times v0 i0 or a half p0 let's end with a quick example calculate the rms voltage of an ac supply with a peak voltage of 325 volts and calculate the mean power dissipated in a 100 ohm resistor. So first of all let's calculate our RMS voltage. So V RMS is equal to V0 over root 2 of 325 divided by root 2 gives us 230 volts which happens to be the main supply voltage uh, in the UK and Europe. To find the mean power when we know the voltage and the resistance we can simply do the RMS voltage squared divided by R which gives us 529 watts.